Hello friends, hope you are doing well. Uh, welcome to the 11th practice set of the SET series and in this episode we are going to specifically focus on ratios uh, in the context of geometry, right? So ratios are very important whether we are doing algebra or geometry or anything else. Uh, so let's understand how do we deal with ratios. Let's get started with our very first question, okay? So uh, we have a square A, B, C, D, uh, right? And we have another square inside this square E, F, G, H, such that F, G, H, and E are the midpoints of the outer square. So the fact that uh, A, F is equal to F, B, similarly B, G is equal to G, C, and so on, right? And uh, in this situation, we have to find the ratio of the areas of the outside square to the area of the inside square. Correct. Now the first thing which we need to understand uh, while dealing with ratios is that we need not have any values for any of these squares, right? As we see in this question, uh, we don't know the lengths of these squares or anything. But we don't need to know those things as long as we are talking about finding the ratios. Correct? Uh, let's see what I mean by that. Okay, so for example, let's assume that the length of the outside square is x. Okay, now if the length of the outside square is x, then the area of the outside square would be x square, correct? So x square is the area of a, b, c, d, correct? Now we have to find, let's find the area of the inside square e, f, g, h, also in terms of x, so that eventually this x square terms will cancel out. So if this side is x, and since h is the midpoint of dc, let's say, so this side would be x by 2, correct? Similarly, this side would be x by 2. Now let's expand this triangle here. This is e, this is d, and this is h. This is x by 2, as we just saw, this is x by 2. This is a 90 degree triangle because it's in square. So we can use Pythagoras theorem to find the length of EH. Okay, let's say that this length EH is C. By Pythagoras theorem, we know that C square is equal to the square of this side plus the square of this side. which is equal to x square over 4 plus x square over 4, which is 2x square over 4 or x square over 2. So x square over 2 is the length of EH, correct? So this length is x square over 2. Or not this length, c square, actually c square, right? Because we are finding uh, c square here. So not the length, but c square itself is x square over 2. Now, if this side is c, each of these sides is c, what is the area of the inside square? The area of the inside square would be c square. So essentially, if we look, we are actually interested in c square itself. We, are not, we, are, we were never interested in c because we have to find the area of the inside square, which is nothing but c square. And we are directly getting the value of c square as x square over 2. Hence, the area of e f g h is nothing but x square over 2. So this entity here is x square over 2. Right? So we are finding the ratio of the areas of the outside square to the inside square. The area of the outside square is x square. And the, ratio, and the area of the inside square is x square over 2. So the ratio becomes 2 is to 1 x square and x square get cancelled out and the ratio is 2 is to 1. So basically the point I'm trying to make is that in all these questions related to ratios, we don't need to have any value because the things will cancel out. We're talking about the ratio, right? We can do the same question uh, taking some values also. I mean, right now we have assumed a variable x and we did in terms of x, but we, could, we can take any value also. So for example, here, Let's say that instead of x, we assumed a value, right? Let's say we assumed that the length of the outside square was, let's say, 20. Okay? 
if the length of the outside square was 20, then the area of the outside square would be 20 times 20, which is 400, right? Now let's find the area of the inside square. If the outside length is 20, then this length dh would be 10 because h is the midpoint. Similarly, ed would be 10 because e is the midpoint of ad. Now again, look. let's look at this triangle here, e, d, and h. This is 10, this is 10. So this would be square of this plus the square of this, so 100 plus 100, which is 200. So this length eh is square root of 200, right? What is the area of the inside square? This side times this side. So square root of 200 times the square root of 200, which is nothing but 200. So the area of the inside square in that case would be 200. The area of the outside square is 400 because we assumed that this length is 20 and this ratio again comes out to be 2 is to 1. Right. So the point I'm trying to make is that whenever we have to uh, look into these questions which are talking about the ratios, we don't need to have any value. We can consider assume any value and take it from there. Or we can also talk in terms of any variable and the variables will cancel out with themselves and you will still get the ratio. Uh, question number two. So we have three circles, C1, C2, and C3, right? Such that C1 is the biggest circle and inside this circle, we have circle C2 and C2 circle passes through the center of circle C1, okay? And then within circle C2, we have a circle C3 and the circle C3 says that it passes through the center of circle C2. So this is the situation. And here we have to find the ratios of the area of the bigger circle to the area of the smallest circle, correct? So the area of C1, circle C1, to the area of circle C3, again, no dimensions are given. As we saw in the previous question, there is no need to have any dimensions because we can assume a variable and take it from there and things will uh, cancel out by themselves. Let's see what I mean by that. So to begin with, let's say that let R be the radius of the smallest circle. So we are saying that let R be the radius of circle C3, okay? So this distance here is R, correct? This is the radius of the smallest circle and we are saying that let this be R. If this is R, obviously this will also be R because this is the radius of the same circle, the smallest circle. So this is also R, correct? Now let's look at the middle circle C2. If we look at the middle circle C2, this is the center of C2 and this is the radius of C2, which is nothing but R plus R, which is 2R, correct? So what we are seeing is that 2R is the radius, will be the radius of C2, correct? Let's move on further here. Now, Let's go to C1. Now this is the radius of C1, correct? What is this equal to? This is equal to 2R plus 2R because this is also the radius of the middle circle. And we just saw that the radius of the middle circle would be 2R. So this distance here is also 2R because that is also the radius of the middle circle. Now, the radius of the biggest circle, the outermost circle is this, which is 2R plus 2R, which is 4R. So this radius is 4R, correct? So we started with the radius of the smallest circle and we were able to drive the radius of the biggest circle in terms of R, which is, which came out to be 4R here. So now what's the area of the outermost circle? 
pi times the radius of that circle squared. So pi times 4 r squared. Right? Pi r squared is the radius of the, uh, the uh, area of the circle. What is the area of the smallest circle? Pi r squared. Pi r squared. Correct? And obviously pi and pi get cancelled. We get 16 r squared divided by r squared. R square, is, R square gets cancelled and we get 16 is to 1. So the ratio of the area of the biggest circle to the smallest circle would be 16 is to 1. Again, as we saw in the previous question, we just assume a variable, find the value of that entity in terms of that variable and then we derive the, the value of the other entity in terms of the same variable and we write the ratios. Those variables cancel out and we get the ratio. Hey folks, hopefully you liked the video and it gave you a good perspective in terms of how do we deal with ratios, right? These ratios can be in terms of algebra or geometry or whatever. But whenever we are trying to find the ratio of two entities, we don't necessarily need to know the values of those two entities. We can assume any variables or assume any values and things will cancel out with each other. Keep practicing and in case you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at info.mathleaps.gmail.com. See you in the next session.